Hello, with me today, I have Thomas McMahon, Senior Investment Trust Analyst at Kepler Trust Intelligence. Hello, Thomas. Thanks for joining me today. Good morning, Lee. Good to speak to you. Now, um, it, there's lots to think about, clearly, going into 2021. Um, are there any themes that you believe will in, influence portfolio construction for the next year? And, and how might investors make tweaks to exploit any, any new trends? I think a key trend is likely to be the shift towards ESG investing, specifically with regards to environmental energy, environmental concerns. Um, think about the, the way that governments, you know, even prior to this crisis, it, a key priority for many governments was transitioning away from carbon fossil fuels to alternatives. And out of this crisis, that priority has, own, has only risen. And we've seen our own government make some very strong commitments in that, in that respect, which would require significant shifts in industry and our ways of life, or at least the products we use. So I think that next year we're going to see, you know, environmental assets have had the win behind them this year. I don't think that's not an intended pun. I don't think that that's going to change next year. Yeah, I think renewable energy is going to be uh, an area of um, key interest for governments around the world. And I think there are other investment trusts, there are other uh, investments keying into living a, a lower carbon lifestyle that, that could also do so well. So not, not just specifically renewable infrastructure, um, but there's a lot of industries now that are, are shifting to different ways of working. So I think that's, you know, you don't, you could be perfectly cynical about ESG, um, but that doesn't, that's a completely different matter from uh, whether it's a good investment strategy. And th there's no question that, you, you know, governments are telling you that a lot of money is going to be invested in this space. So there are definitely investment opportunities there. So I think that's a key one. Um, probably another theme is going to be, uh, well, it's going to be the recovery and it's going to be sort of the catch up um, of the assets that haven't yet started to to react to what we all hope will be a rollout of vaccines and a gradual return to normal life. So I think some areas that look interesting from that perspective, the UK, have, I've already mentioned, you know, eventually it's time will come. Um, you know, I thought it would be this year until the pandemic hit. And we saw a strong rally in December 2019. Uh, I think that even if we get a, a no deal, I think the, the ending of the uncertainty will allow people to make plans. And, and the UK still has lots of advantages wherever it is located politically, which should make it a, an interesting place to invest. So I, I think that the UK has been under pressure for some time and it could be an area to look to raise, raise allocations next year. Another interesting area could be Latin America, which is typically very geared to global economic recovery. It did terribly during the pandemic. I think the Latin American index was the worst performing index in, in February, March. Um, and perhaps could be an interesting area to, to look to raise allocations next year. So, uh, you know, th those areas that have lagged in the recovery so far, that could be maybe be a little bit later to, to join the party could be an interesting place to look as well. Well, look, Thomas, that's, that's three interesting uh, um, you know, themes there. I mean, what, what, can you just give us a few of your favourite trusts, the, you know, the best ways to play them? So taking uh, renewable, uh, renewables and, and green energy and, and ESG first, there aren't a, ter a huge number of investment trusts focused on this space, which is interesting from an investor's perspective. So TRIG, the Renewables Infrastructure Group, um, is one option. It's been around for a long period of time. Um, at the time that we're recording this, it's trading on a large premium and it has done for some time. But it's a, perhaps a relatively solid, stable choice with perhaps some valuation issue in, in the short period. Jupiter Green is a much smaller investment trust, which is um, perhaps not being on the radar of many investors. Certainly won't fall on the radar of many professional investors because of its size. 
um, which may interest non-professional investors, you know, being able to, to access something that professionals um, might find it difficult to, to justify buying. And that's undergoing a revamp of its strategy in order to try and um, broaden out the type of investments it looks at to, to bring them down the market cap spectrum, to find smaller and mid-cap names with, with greater growth potential. It's now also trading on a premium and issuing shares, um, perhaps indicative of you know, the high demand for investment trusts in this space. Um, I think those are two interesting ones um, for renewables. In the UK, you know, I've already mentioned Aberforth Smaller and Aberforth Split. They've been very much out of favour for a long period of time. Value has not helped. Their value approach has led them into UK domestics, which were under pressure due to Brexit concerns. So it's all been bad news for some time, but they are now very cyclically exposed relative to peers. And if we do see a bounce in the UK, they could do very well in, in the short term. Um, if you want a more safe is probably the, the wrong word, but yeah, a, a very different choice in the UK, uh, BlackRock Throgmorton has a very growth-based approach, which some people may be more comfortable with. It's been the top forming trust over five years. It's got a very uh, an unusual uh, feature, and it can also short stocks as well as as well as go long. Um, and so if you prefer to have a more growth oriented UK exposure, that could be a good option. Of course, you won't, you're unlikely to get that on a discount. Um, for Latin America, there's only really one option now, which is BlackRock Latin America. And there aren't a huge number of open ended funds. It's just been an area that's not been of interest as China has um, has really taken all, all the money in emerging markets and grown to become such a huge part of, of the index. So BlackRock Latin America, which tends to trade on a persistent discount, you know, if you do if you do get a lot of investor, you know, if, if the market really starts to rally on, an, on a global re recovery and you get investors looking for exposure, they can only really go to this one space in the, in the closed-ended universe. So that maybe makes the discount, uh, you can see it narrow quite considerably. So... I think that's quite an interesting one too. It also pays a um, considerable dividend yield from capital of 5% um, annualised, which might interest some. Great. Thomas McMahon at uh, Kepler Trust Intelligence, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Lee. It was good to speak to you.